Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking, and today we are back in automation with the Light Campaign V4.0 Let's Play of the campaign, and we uh, are doing so with Superlico Incorporated and Doctor Diploma Engineer Hans Dieter Krause, who is becoming a little old, he, but he's still going strong. I mean, he has had a very efficient life, and uh, so far things are looking very positive. Uh, we are just about upgrading to massive factories and even the smaller ones are being upgraded to medium three and uh, it's looking good uh, we still have plenty of money in the bank uh, big big margins and uh, I think what today is for let, let's have a look well this one is going to come out and if we take a look at research and development that thing is there yes indeed so Oh, Alzi. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I think we want to have that one too, don't we? Yeah. Uh, this one is not relevant. This is not relevant. Yeah, okay. Magnesium. No. No. We, but we do need that one. So the question is how we best do that. Probably wait a year. Uh, we could sink some more money into that. One million extra per month just to get tech level... Yeah, okay, let's let's go plus three so that we get there a little quicker. Uh, it might be two, three months. And now just forward time and see how that plays out. Uh, we should be unlocking that very, very soon. Okay, let's take a look. Maybe this has e already been done. Uh, looking good there. The berry is, of course, being replaced with this here. Uh, that is our Laura, the H94, and those factories is what we are replacing that with. Uh, this is the upgraded one, the M3, and then we have this one. Let's see what this one does. Mm, that is the Marabou, getting its final revamp. So, uh, now uh, we need to check out the research and development and see that this is indeed unlocked and this is indeed unlocked. Excellent. Our quick burst in research did do the trick. Engine projects. Let's start a new engine project. And we do want it to be uh, for a small car, doesn't it? Yeah, small car and probably also a prototype, another prototype, of uh, for an engine of a larger car. So two engines that uh, our diploma engineer needs to be designing. Uh, let's hope he's still... Yeah, he should be. I mean, he's he's just how old? Uh, he is 75. That's not too bad. It's like around 75. Yeah, that's all good. So, Han Hans Dieter, um, we have this new technology unlocked now that I think you will love. And you already know about it. I mean, you're the inventor of it, so... Why don't you show us how to build a really good engine with that one? And we want two of them. We want one for a large car and one for a small car. Uh, okay, just just go crazy. The, this is yours, right? So just go ahead. Yes, so well, uh, the, the small car we can do first. But uh, this is going to be quite easy because I'm designing the engine. This means that this is more or less trivial. Uh, we do, can't make an engine, an inline three that is this big. That is just way too unsmooth. And we are going to drop it down to something like 900 cc maybe. Uh, that, that is more than enough. Yes, this is looking good. Uh, do we get even closer? Yeah, there. Um, we have the dual overhead cam, four valve, and we are going Alzi everywhere. This is just good, good standard procedure. And we need cast, cast, and low friction cast. And then, uh, wait, wait a second. Here we finally can select VVT for the all cams. 
we lower the cam profile because who needs high-end performance we need performance right at where the, we have the maximum efficiency of the engine which is around 2000 rpm if it's a high revving engine so let's let's make it there uh, this is going to be turbocharged so i'm just going to start with a lower compression here and then turbocharge the engine of course we want to have the fuel economy preset and then go from there this is my standard little turbo i slap on and this is terrible for efficiency i don't know why the the graphics designers put such shit in here this doesn't make any sense to me but okay we we of course this is just a prototype there will be a much nicer header for the turbo to not disrupt so much flow you know so now finally we can take the ignition a direct in in injection it's taking 137 months to engineer i don't think that is a good thing but this is just a prototype so we should be fine and uh, we go for the standard stuff the the massive problem we would have had with the carburetors is that standard intake or single configuration would mean that there is terrible distribution between the three cylinders for the for the fuel so it's basically impossible to tune it right uh, so that all the three cylinders get the correct firing time but with the direct injection this is not a problem anymore and we can go around this very nice and so now the regular ah you you see this is what we want for for the turbo not the the cast lock shit this is terrible uh, we are going for the 15o and we are using 91 and uh, the ignition timing now with this system we probably wanted to have it somewhere around 60 or 65 we're not revving high after all this is not a large engine though or oh, it's quite large for an inline 3 in my uh, opinion uh, the 900 cc is quite hefty but we, we can we can start out with the lower quality here this should drop down yes you see 63 months now so this is more manageable and we can later on just increase the quality again we are going to use this reverse flow and this is already looking quite promising but we are far away from uh, being pro properly efficient 28.9 this is not quite good yet okay i have optimized the engine a little bit more just for the the fuel economy of course and now i just need to re-up the compression so that we can see the actual results and yes uh, what are this is around what i would expect it's not phenomenal but uh, this is not expected because this engine is a very early prototype because the guys who are helping the engineer are really bad at their job you see this is not an acceptable uh, engineering time really but we have to run it at minus seven quality this is bullshit and other than that once we have the quality going and people actually understand my ingenious design for the direct injection then we can really push the boundaries of efficiency like the last engine which i've perfected now had 33 uh, percent efficiency and we are definitely going to go over that even with the small engine don't forget that the small engine the smaller the capacity per cylinder the less efficiency you can get out of your design because there's just more surface area per volume you are you are surrounding and so that means uh, more cylinder walls per capacity and that means there's more friction of course so that is why we have we are seeing some lower numbers right now but if we are going to where the engine should be which is like like here you can already see that without even compensating for the much lower octane rating we are having fuel economy at almost 33 percent so we are definitely on the right track 
but the stupid assistants I have just, just can't deal with the technology that we are advancing here. So let's give them a bit of time. I know that is weird, but uh, yeah, this is how this company has always worked. So let's just do it. The power of the engine is just 50, ki uh, not even kilowatts, it's just 50 horsepower. But this is a small inline 3 that goes into city cars and it's supposed to be quite inexpensive too. And very, very good service and so on. So let's keep it small and low power. You don't need all the power after all. It's 90, 83 kilos. So this is... You remember my analogies with the sacks of potato. So this engine is like four sacks of potato less heavy than the normal engine you would put in a car like this. And four sacks of potato are a lot of, of liters per hundred kilometers. All right, well, that is a, a fancy, fancy creation there. I can, I can see that that working <laughs> without the minus seven quality there that will sure help um, also we we're going to design two prototypes at the same time which will bring up the familiarity really quick for what we're doing here so prototyping it is uh, tooling can go to zero process can go to zero reliability can drop a little as well um, we do want to cram out these prototypes quite fast so how about we go with uh, 36 um, pressure we do want to have some proper learning going on so let's put it to 20 this is just 44 million let's lower this back down to 36 this is perfect okay yep sounds about right uh, good prototype three years very much affordable and shit uh, set up for what we're trying to do but yeah that's it's the first prototype so it should be fine uh, let's uh, trust in the Hans Dieter's knowledge and see if this works uh, we should be renaming this of course this is the SE 900 E95 prototype and I think we're ready to sign it off no production 40 million easy three years so now we need the second engine and that one is for a larger family car like our premium our premium cars with loads of capacity hmm what can we do there um Hans Dieter could you could you get on on that one as well sure sure so i'm going to design you an engine which really pushes the absolute maximum of ginormous capacity and uh, premiumness for the engine right so this is going to be absolutely fantastic and we are going to build an inline four engine uh, with loads of capacity and that will be uh, so let's see uh two liters that is that is almost a little much but uh, let's let's see now we, we can go two liters maybe 2.2.1 can we even rev with this one to where we need to 94 is quite bad so let's let's try to go a little lower something like this 2.1 liters we don't need to rev it after all this is going to be a pure economy engine which really maximizes the economy and why are we going for an inline engine you ask if it's so large instead of a boxer or an inline six well the answer is simple because sacks of potato so you you know all this so i don't have to say it again now don't want to say it again you should have learned your lesson by now we are going for low friction cast of course and then the all cams and just lower this because the turbocharger is coming on top we're going for 25 
this is a good starting point a turbocharger ball bearing and the fuel economy setting this is also giving us a little bit more leeway for turbo optimizations because the small engine had the problem of being at the lower minimum of the size which is stupid of course so this is looking quite promising already you can see that we are uh, still strangling the, with the exhaust slightly but this is fine now i just need to do the standard tuning and we are already at 30.8 much better than the small engine but that is expected because small engines are not that great for efficiency but the advantage of the small engine is that you can always run them at higher throttle settings and with higher throttle settings the engine doesn't have as many pumping losses as a large engine with the lower throttle settings. So that is important to know here. We don't have any problem with the revs which is great news. So at least the engineers aren't too stupid to figure out how to rev the low friction cast pistons high enough. But what we should be seeing is that we can get the spool quite a bit lower than this. So let me try a few things. Now with these settings like a larger compressor but the smallest turbine possible and some more, uh, more open uh, IR ratio this is looking like quite efficient already but nowhere near where we will be able to push this engine once it's really good and we are running at minus seven here this is good news and now we can up the compression again and we should be seeing some new record for fuel efficiency even in the prototype really solid I'm quite happy with this prototype of the engine uh, it is doing exactly what I want. We can also just do a little bit more tuning but I'm not too worried about these settings now in detail because we just need to get the prototype right and changing these settings later is just as good as changing them now because we don't learn anything extra here now apart from seeing beautiful numbers and I love beautiful numbers. They are important especially for my morale but uh, this is looking fantastic. So 34.4, so much higher than the small engine. I really like what I'm seeing here. All right, quite impressive indeed. SE4 2100. I never thought it would be possible to see an engine that large from Hans Dieter, but uh, maybe he has softened up in the later years of his career a bit. He's no longer no longer pushing his vision necessarily just looks for new challenges and um, yeah this this was certainly one uh, good stuff uh, factory no no thank you we have ooh, 90 that is that's a lot let's optimize that slightly um, pressure we wanted to have that at 20 funding 50 yeah and now we just lower the reliability till it fits and that will be there oh perfect Okay, um, fair enough. 41 million for that project as well. And we should be gaining loads of familiarity in that now. And yeah, push that engine out. It cost us zero. And we agree. Oh, should we sign them off? A tiny engine for a tiny city car and a, um, a much larger engine for a proper sedan. A large one even. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, these are selected. We deactivate the loans. We don't need that stuff. And go. We will now, or uh, very, rather very soon, need a replacement for the Marabou. Uh, it is selling out quite fast. Mm, yeah, that's why we are having so big, such big profits. But uh, yeah, the facelift is coming up very soon. And then we just make a new one. And here we go. Let's get to there. Oh. Yeah, I re refresh costs because, oh, ouch, it's quite a lot, 20, 30 million, yeah, we pay in cash, that's a third of our profits per month, <laughs> I think we can just about, just about uh, take that, and there, come on, take over, take over a few more times, there it is, the Marabou MK3 is here, 
Now, these sales numbers look wrong for some reason. Um, not quite sure what is going on there. I think they need a month to like re refigure out themselves. Uh, we do need to make a facelift of the Marabou though. So this is still running on the E90 engine. And the thing is that this factory, the Nanila EM3, is still producing that engine, if I'm correct. It should be. View engine factories. Yeah, it is still producing that one. So we do have that one active. Um, that's all good. It's producing it. Number of items per month. Yeah, 2,900 needed at the moment. That will go up as soon as the production is picked up. But we are going to switch that factory over to the new version, the 94, which is quite a bit better. Ah, uh, that is right. I think that we engineered it such that it would take quite a long time for that one to finish, didn't we? Uh, we should be able to see that in the graphs of the, um, of the engineering project. So let's just head in there. I think I even set it up to be taking this long. Uh, but yeah. We shall see. <laughs> it's quite funny to see that the cooling flaps don't do anything to this. Uh, like 0.1 liters. Yeah, that's about right. If you put an economy engine in there and one that is a little bit on the low powered side, then you sure won't have much effect for cooling flaps. So that's all good. We didn't need much of an update for this first one. Quite easy. We just get better prices for the premium CD and so on. Just this engine change is so massive a difference in fuel economy with the low friction cast pistons and all the upgrades from 5.9 liters 100k to 4.8. Quite crazy and much higher reliability too. All right, I've just gone through and fixed up all the cars for the new facelift. No real difference. Um, just a few little changes here for the tuning. Going for staggered width setup for the wheels. Uh, which allows some better suspension tuning and stuff, but yeah, that's really it. Uh, these two are still on the um, uh, on the premium interior, and this one on the basic. I'm going to skip on the um, repair of the factory building and the major tooling, and just refresh the minor tooling. Makes it a lot quicker, five months to be exact. Oh, and now we're seeing that, yes, slightly higher tooling is indeed upping the efficiency of production. So we are in that time now and outputting a lot more cars too. I think another 32 months should be fine. Uh, yes, um, it is a little tricky though with how are we going to do uh, the syncing with the new um, new car that is supposed to be coming out and is going to, supposed to be using the large factory that is coming out. Right, okay, there we have it. So, the problem is, this is 47 months until the engine comes out. Uh, and we are currently aiming for 32 for the car. But what I would like to do is to sync them up. So the car is taking quite a bit longer, it needs to take quite a bit longer from here. 15 months extra. And then we have a fresh factory to go on as well. That would also mean that we, at that moment, when it comes out, don't actually have the car fact the um, engine factories to produce that many engines. Yeah, we would be running at three shifts because that's only the other car factory that is uh, the engine, other engine factory that is outputting those engines. Uh, that is not great. Hmm. All right, I'll have a little think about this. And I think we end the episode right here and continue uh, with this right at the start of the next one, figuring out what to do in this situation. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.